Welcome to the Prevail Over Cancer podcast, where we take a metabolic approach to help guide you on preventing, prevailing, and striving over cancer. We are live. We are live on the Prevail Over Cancer podcast. I'm your host with my amazing co-host, Keith Bishop. I'm Jeff Lopes. This week is a great topic because it's something that any grocery store, any fast food joint, anywhere you go, sugar, it's around us. And yes, people right. are aware of how bad it is, but people do not stop intaking it. And there's different levels of addiction to it. There's different mm-hmm. levels of um, but it's just understanding of what it does to your body and, mm-hmm. and the connection there is towards cancer. So let's just start off. Let's just start off with, I, I want to go with kind of the history and now this coming more to light with um, aspartame and understanding that was brought out in 1965. And then we went to, in 1976 to sucralose. So there's two things that are linked to, possibly linked to cancer carnogenic mm-hmm. effects and all that stuff. So let's talk about right. it. You start diving into aspartame and and your knowledge of it because as a kid, I was really into health and fitness. I was putting those little pink and yellow packages thinking I was healthy on everything. My coffee, I would put it on my right. oatmeal. I would put it on my, I would put on everything. And 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 now that I go back and think, the amount of those packages that probably intaked and through my teens and my early 20s, was incredible. Even my father, I remember my father healthier choice and is expressed every day, but a little pack of that little yellow pack. So let's mm-hmm. start, let's talk about that. Let's start. Where's your understanding of that? And, and when was that brought into your knowledge? And when did you start realizing this is not a good thing? Well, just, you know, I'm, I prefer to do natural type things anyway. And so that's, you know, just, forever and and i never really liked the idea about that even you know they've been around for a long time even um uh saccharin you know uh was was the probably the first one and so uh and there's these uh, gosh that was back in the 80s even there was this little blip about like bladder cancer with that and um and so it's uh in you know like I said, it seemed like uh, people were having problems you know many, many years ago. And that was like the, the number one artificial sweetener that was in uh, uh, beverages, uh, soda pops, and uh, as we call them here. And so, and, but, but then even then there was like, there's these little blips and things like, huh, seems like it increases the risk of cancers, you know, and more specifically bladder cancer. So, you know, the way the body detoxes and gets rid of chemicals is, you know, through bowel movement and urine. And yeah. so, and, and if, it, if we can't metabolize chemicals right, and they come out through the urine, it's going to damage the, the lining of the bladder. And then we get this bladder, you know, cancer type thing. So, so you know, the problem is, is that the FDA here in the United States and, and a lot of other countries end up following kind of what the United States does uh, to a certain extent. And, you know, they just don't really study this in great detail. You know, they have a, a short term study. Yes, this is fine. It didn't seem to cause cancer, you know, or the uh, dose that we gave the rats for, were so high. That's why it was a problem. And the human dose is going to be lower. So therefore, it won't be a problem. Uh, but it, it's this exposure year after year after year becomes an acc- accumulative a problem or a concern. So, yes. So that was back, you know, once again, back in the 80s. And I, I remember a lot of discussion going on in the health area about that. And we were telling people, you know, healthcare, some people, you know, really those drinks aren't really good. And then they came out with the the next ones, the aspartame, you know, artificial sweeteners. And and once again, they didn't really provide many studies with that. And there were a few animal studies and and the FDA approved it. And and there was a big move that, you know, we got to cut out sugar. Sugar's the problem. And, um, uh, of course, that was after they said that fat was the problem. <laughs> and so you, you keep kind of changing, you know, their, their approaches to blood sugar and diabetes and weight gain and, and things like that. And, 
And it reminds me, you know, there was a at the back in once again back in the eighties, uh, I had a pharmacy that was inside a grocery store, and so I'm very aware of all these kind of things going on. And and it's like, you know, fat is bad, so you can eat this muffin. I'm not going to say the brand, but this muffin is like this big, 500 calories. You can have this because there's no fat in it. Well, and that's what everybody was doing. We're going no fat and and having all these you know uh, problems that were actually showing up very quickly within a few years. Then they switched, okay, well, now we need to be careful about carbohydrates and sweeteners, and, and, and then we go into these artificial sweeteners. But the, we can't rely on the government to you know, make sure that the drug and food companies are doing the due gil- diligence. You know, it's, it's sad. I, I, I want to believe that people are good and, and that they have good intentions and that businesses are good. I really do. And, but, you know, they have a tendency, it's a, it's a, it's a financial type thing. They will make decisions to make money. Anytime, and, anytime you have a board of directors to answer to, yeah, that's realistic. That's the pharmaceutical company, right. industry. That's the the food and food and drug industry. Just in general, you have a board of directors to and a bottom line to show. And if that bottom line is not hitting and they're not hitting their targets, people are losing jobs. And not to lose their job, they're going to do what they need to do to keep the profitability there. And when you're looking right. at that, that's where stuff like. Like I said, things are being passed very quickly through FDAs and and uh, and they're just being just under the table, cleaned up very quickly just to get everything through. They'll do a couple of tests. Yeah, we're good. And we're next. And we don't know the long term effect of any of these things. And now they're right. coming out. I get now there's studies coming out how accurate they are. But there's studies coming out with aspartame and the, and the links to cancer. And they've been talking about that in the last mm-hmm. couple of years. And we were talking about that. As I recall, in the early 2000s, exactly you said, everything was fat free. You go to the grocery store and you're like, oh, that's fat free. Let's buy this. That's fat free. Let's buy this. That's fat free. Mm-hmm. Sugar levels, glucose levels, the aspartame levels were so high in those things. But worse, and the caloric intake was so high. People are still out of shape. Right. People are still unhealthy. And the long term effect we're seeing now with the increase of numbers of disease, mm-hmm. diabetes, cancer, heart, heart, heart issues. And right. And then we went to that level where it became everything sugar free. And then when it mm-hmm. became sugar free, so we went through these these quote unquote health phases in the two thousands, early two thousands. That mm-hmm. you sit back now that we have more knowledge and understanding. The biggest issue I find, Keith, is people still don't have the knowledge and understanding. Right. They don't. That's it, the it, biggest thing. And that's why it's important. Like like this episode or whatever these episodes, we have to share this information. It's so easy. We hear this and we can share it. And, you know, once again, I remember back, I'm going back to the 70s, you know, there were yeah. radio shows on and about, you know, uh, Paul Harvey and 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 and, and, and shows that, that were great. And we'd tell people, oh, wow, you got to listen to this. This episode was really great. And um, and this guy's really good. And we'd, we'd tell people, well, we need to do the same thing. We find some great information. It's so easy to share it, you know, with our electronic device, the phone or the computer, share that with a loved one that, you know, is, you know, making some choices that maybe, you know, could be better. You know, we we can help lead them to that. But it's a time and time and time and time again. Eventually, they're going to get it. And so and start making changes. So. Uh, you know, in the marketing area, and you know this uh, as a businessman, you know, how many impressions does it take for somebody to see something before they're going to buy it? You know, nine, 11 times or something like yeah, that. Yeah, if they, say yeah. Nine, if nine, they say nine to 12 times. Visually, you yeah. have to see it. They actually say it takes nine to 12 times. You visually this pass by a store or a sign, be able, it locks your head for you to actually start questioning what it is. Right. And then it may take another four to five times before. So it's that it's that long term effect, right? And that's why exactly. the marketing is the amount of marketing they put into it is so impressive that these companies just keep throwing it down your throat, throwing down your phone. Exactly. Till. Those commercials over and over and over and over again. The same commercial over and over and over and over again. And so we have to therefore, you know, we, you know, as the public and community, we have to do the same thing. We have to share this information with with loved ones and friends that we know that they're not doing something, you know, that is good for them. 
and and we can guide them. Well, we we can say something, but we can also share that information, share another tidbit later, share another tidbit later, and it does take some time. And I do see those changes. You know, if if a person has a crisis health condition, let's say a, a cancer diagnosis, you know, a lot of times they're more willing to make more drastic changes. But if they feel good, or at least they they don't realize that they're feeling bad or there's a problem, they're not willing to make a change. But a lot of these people individually trust the medical system. And oh, we've had this conversation right. many times, Keith, where a person yeah. is diagnosed with cancer, like myself, and the oncology says, hey, don't change your diet. You're fine. Right. So if, if, if your physician or your oncologist is saying, don't change your diet, let's go the route of treatment. Let's be realistic. You have to make, even if you do go that route of treatment, which I'm not, I'm not going to say yes or no. Everybody has different scenarios, different situations. Right. But you have to still make the dietary and the physical changes to give yourself a fighting chance. Exactly. So, you know, if you, you can't keep doing the same thing, expect different results. And, you know, you know, you know so, you know, I, I, my, uh, well, the grass in the yard or the pasture grass, you know, I have to do certain things to that. And I do have to cut those weeds and get rid of those weeds and make sure that it has the right nutrients, you know, for that to do good or plants or my garden, whatever. And if we don't do that, we, we get bad results. Same thing with our body. We have to make those good decisions. So, you know, keep adding these bad chemicals every single day, multiple times a day often or several packets a day, multiple times a day, every day, it's going to create some problems. And then some of those are going to be mental. Some of them are going to be physical and gut issues. But let's, let's talk about that because everything we put in our mouth ends up going through our digestive tract, ends up in our right. colon. And realistically, the increase in colorectal cancer, it's now the number one killer in men, number two in females when it comes to the cancer family. and it's essentially everything we're putting in our bodies. And right. these are all things. Now, I was looking at the um, what is the recommended dose or a recommended amount of sugar per day per individual. It says men, 36 grams or 150 calories. Women, 25 grams or 100 calories. 36 grams. Most sugar drinks have more than 36 grams. I know they do. That's right. Now, we're talking of individuals that have addictions, have addictions to um, energy drinks, have addictions to Coca-Cola, have addictions, and they're drinking four or five of these a day. Now think of the numbers. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden they go to the, they, they, they read this, they listen to our podcast. So they go back to that gas station, go back to that grocery store and they like, they read a label saying sugar-free. So they think they're making a healthier choice. Now they're putting all these other chemicals and all this other crap in your bodies. Right. So how do mm -hmm. we make people understand that we have to make better choices is obviously healthier alternatives. That's why I want to kind of lead to healthier alternatives for sugar. And yeah. we're going to go through the list right now. I, I wrote down eight of them. I'm going to read them out. And I want you to give your opinion on all of them. And are they better? Or are they not? Okay. We'll yeah, go through them. Um, number one, Stevia. Stevia. I do like Stevia. Yeah. And it is a it is a natural product. Um, I uh, I wish I could grow it better here. So it's a more of a uh, equator type plant and a, a growing zone, a warmer climate, and so it, it will kind of grow for a few months here in uh, in Oklahoma. Uh, I I do like it. I'm a little bit more concerned about s some of the additional ingredients. Actually, it is so potent and sweet that you can't even hardly measure it. Now, unless you had a dropper, like a liquid version of it, even with that, that means they they've diluted it with another liquid, um, you know, maybe glycerin, which is kind of sweet anyway, or um, uh, an alcohol, you know, and uh, dilute it so you can actually measure it. But it's actually so potent. Uh, we actually use it in making some prescriptions at at Flourish Pharmacy, and so um, and and it actually it, the, the amount to sweeten some tr uh, trochies for the mouth that dissolve these lozenges in the mouth. I mean. We make a batch, and it's like the tiniest little amount is what they have to measure. It's very difficult to measure it, even, you know. And then they mix all that up, so it's very potent. And but they have to 
um, you know, in the in the drug world, it's called do, uh, cut it, but they have to actually add other items to that to make it in the packets. So those packets uh, contain uh, other powders, and we're now learning that uh, there's another one, and we'll probably talk about this. I, I imagine, but it's called erythritol. Yeah, um, is a one of those sweet powders uh, or maltro uh, dextrin and, and some things like yeah. that. And and so those are also added and they have few calories. But now we're learning that those can be some problems. Oops, let me turn that off. OK. OK, I forgot to turn off my phone and watch. Never. The, um, and so. So those can be some potential concerns, and uh, but uh, actually there's a newer version of the stevia that I like, and and I normally don't kind of like push brands or anything, but I am on this case, and so it's called stevia in the raw, that is organic, and actually they add you know to help measure that and put it so they can put it in a packet, they actually put a little bit of organic sugar in it, a tiny a bit, and so. Um, a, t- a tiny bit of sugar, I'm not concerned about. Matter of fact, there's not even enough calories in that packet for them to list it as a calorie. Yeah. Uh, but they add that organic uh, sugar to it. And so it's going to be a better option than some of the other more processed chemicals. So, um, you know, I, I love stevia. Yeah. Guys, you love it. We do have concerns. We don't know the just kind of like acetone. You don't know the refining or the long term process to turn into those packages what the long-term effect on our body is because stevia is fairly new still fairly new yes, sure it's it been is. around for for centuries but it's fairly new to the health industry and it's being pushed as a healthy alternative to sugar and right. it's been i would say I, i've only really been paying attention to stevia maybe five six years max yes yeah that is right it is new and so therefore we've got to keep just paying attention and learning so you know i i don't use sweeteners me neither. And so, you know, I, you know, th- this is black coffee. You know, uh, I, I love the bitter, you know, and, and, uh, I don't put it in my tea. You know, so I have to admit, I have a little bit, I don't quite understand people that have to do that. But, uh, but anyway, I, so I don't do much stevia. Matter of fact, it is like, I, I don't even use it. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't have yeah. any sweeteners. I don't either. I don't either. And and there there may be some foods that may have something in it that I may get, but yeah. I'm not adding it to things and that's the, at, at all. So um but so yes, even with, with stevia, you know, even though it's a natural plant, we, we need to pay attention to what we learn about that. Uh, let me ask you because I want to get into all the others. I want to because I want to be able to get through everything. Yeah. One last question them. with this. One, there's eight of them I want to go through, but stevia, you, naturally growing it, could you actually put the leaf into, you could, okay, I was going to ask you that, because I've never done that, and that's something I was, as we we're talking, because I'm literally, my office now has got all windows, and I'm growing like snake plants, I'm growing my own ginger, I actually tried growing ginger, I saw it on a, on a video, and this yeah. is pure off topic, I, and they said, get, get a ginger root, organic ginger root, put it, plant it in a big pot, water every other day, you're going to see it sprouting out. And after it sprouts out for about two, three weeks, wait another six to eight weeks, and then take the whole dirt out, you're going to have a bundle of ginger in there. So I'm trying it. And I'm actually, it, it's it's so far, it's sprouted about a foot and a half right now. So I'm oh, wow. waiting to take out in a couple yeah. of weeks, because we're all windows, it's very humid in here. And so I'm, as we're talking, I'm like, should I grow a studio? I could probably grow it here very easily inside here in the office. So you could take the leaf just for people to listen. Yeah. You should get the leaf and use that into. Yeah, like, okay. You know, and matter of fact, I, I will do that. Now, this year, I couldn't find a stevia plant at our local nurseries and things like that. Okay. So once again, it's just not a common thing here in Oklahoma. Uh, but yeah, I, I love to take actually a leaf of that and actually a leaf of a mint, one yeah. of the mint plants, and take both of those and just kind of put it in my tea yeah. or water and, and just you know, kind of break that up just a little bit, just a little bit of a, a, a taste, a little bit of a sweetness and a little plant, you know, kind of a yeah, yeah. with that. I love that. It's awesome. one of my favorites. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. I, I really do. I need to just find a source so I can every spring plant a stevia plant. And one plant awesome. is plenty. You know, it works yeah, yeah. very well, but you just have to, uh, you have to find it. And, and, and it will die out, uh, you know, planting it outside and for most of us. Yeah. The next one I want to go through is, 
And then I want to talk about myself quickly after. But next one I'll go to is sugar alcohols, known as uh, polyolus. Am I pronouncing yes, that right? And, yes. And so the, you know, uh, that sugar alcohols, and that's the erythritols, the xylitol. So the word ends in O-L. Yes. And so uh, sugar, uh, sugars end in O-S, like sucrose. Mm-hmm. Um, and al- sugar alcohols are basically kind of like a, a a bigger sugar, you know, with a, actually a little alcohol in chemistry, a little alcohol piece attached to it. Yeah. Um, and and it's actually very sweet tasting. It doesn't take much. And and it's been used actually for many years. Uh, and yeah. One of the xylitol, one of the favorite things for mouth, dry mouth. It's in uh, many natural toothpastes even, and uh, it has a little bit of an antibacterial action, you know, in the mouth. Uh Uh-oh, what happens if we swallow a lot of that and get it into the gut? Okay, and so now we're starting to learn that both erythritol and xylitol, they found that actually people that have higher blood levels are at an increased risk of heart attack and stroke. Interesting cardiovascular disease. Now it's taken how many xylitol's been around. I remember xylitol uh gosh, you know, since once again the 80s, when yeah. I first started pharmacy. And so it's been around for a long time. But that, you know, it's taking 40 years for somebody to finally, you know, to start doing some studies on that. You know, and once again, I I don't want to just say all companies are bad, but you know, uh, the the scientists and the research companies, the uh, manufacturers that do this research and provide that information to the the federal government agencies to submit it, they don't necessarily publish all their research. Yeah. They they do the research and they cherry pick the results that they want and give them that information. So if something isn't working right, they just put that aside, that information, and they don't share it. So. So, yeah, so yes, the alcohols, we're starting to notice. Matter of fact, I have some problems with that. And so if I take a or eat a protein bar that has erythritol in it, uh, especially xylitol, but erythritol even for me can be a problem. I can eat one bar with enough xylitol in it that they put in there to sweeten it up. And these are natural, good versions and, and things. I am going to get some tremendous gas. I'm going to be passing gas. And and it's amazing. So my digestive system has a difficult time digesting it. Interesting. Uh, and it actually seems to be feeding some bacteria that are you know, a significant issue. So you know what? Matter of fact, we need to make a, a post about gut bacteria and, and things like that. Oh, that's our, we, yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about that too. That's going to be a podcast as well. Okay, good. Cool. Yeah, we need to talk about that. So um, and so uh, so therefore, you know, I learned years ago that you know xylitol w- was a problem for me and in erythritol and just with digestive health. So uh, therefore I avoid it. Now it's, you know, it's kind of interesting. Xylitol is actually dangerous for dogs. And so it actually has a tendency to I think lower their blood glucose too much. So, interesting. so it is a sugar. It is a sugar. And I'm not sure the exact mechanism, but it is a sugar. Their body responds to that. And now their blood sugar drops too much and they go into a hypoglycemic coma type of a thing and and it could could even be deadly for you know some animals like dogs so you know they're you know so i would say i'm not a big fan of alcohol sugars it's very common and just recently this cardiovascular research is coming out so just before we go to the next one if somebody a consumer because i just want to give as much information as possible if the consumer is looking at a package they're looking for those two uh again yeah erythritol and 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 xylitol yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just for our, our audience, that's one thing to be aware on the packaging. The next is we're seeing a lot of this lately. I'm seeing on packages everywhere. Monk fruit sweetener. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yes, monk fruit is uh, another one that I definitely like. So I've researched this like, okay, uh, stevia and monk fruit. What are there uh, at this time? Are there any known cancer concerns? And uh, and I cannot find any concerns about that. Uh, I can't say that there's will never be. Uh, but thus far, I have not found any concerns. It is also a very extremely sweet plant. They say it's almost and, six, 600 times more sweet than uh, an actual okay. sugar. And I was researching okay. that, which is I was just like, wow, stevia, they say it's 300 times. 
lung fruit is aged 600 times. Wow. Okay. So therefore, you know, those little packets, so what color is monk fruit? I don't even know. I, I don't even, I, I see, I only see monk fruit in actual ingredients of pre-made things, foods. Yeah. I don't, I, I've never actually, paid, maybe I haven't paid attention. I haven't even seen it at the grocery store as an yeah, actual, yeah, it is packages. Yeah, orange packet. Okay. You know, it's going to be the monk fruit. And, um, and so, uh, you know, I, I do like it, but you know, once again, I, we've got to be careful about this sweet thing because the refining we, process too. The, yeah. The, because, you know, it's going to lower your blood glucose. I mean, well, your body actually seems to be thinking you're getting sugars with the, yeah. and we have a tendency to go hypoglycemic, low blood glucose. And now we got to eat more to feel better because most people aren't training their bodies to do a, a ketogenic uh, fat burning type lifestyle and feeling for their body. And so, so they have a tendency to, to, you know, to, to make it up later, you know, okay. Uh, I, you know, I'm going hypoglycemic after drinking that or eating that, that food or that beverage and therefore we've got to make it up. And then yes, there is the manufacturing concern. So, there's definitely concerns about w- what chemicals are used. So they take those plants, and they, they just don't grind them up and, and put them in a powder no. type of thing. No. There actually are concerns about some of those chemicals that are used. Yeah. And and those chemicals are not necessarily the best for any of these type things. And, and they don't have to tell you what those chemicals are. So we really don't know. I've actually done quite a bit of research to learn, and, and it can be discovered but that's another reason why I'm I'm not a big proponent in saying that yes everybody should do stevia or monk fruit every day. Well, there is some unknowns because there's there's even though they try to wash out those chemicals and they don't have to tell us what those chemicals are, we're getting those chemicals if we consume those those products. Okay. So a healthier alternative still long term, we don't know the results and right. you're trying to get as natural or like myself and yourself eliminate sugar period right exactly and, and it's, it. it's just the mindset too i mean when i found out i had cancer Keith, november 22nd 2022 uh, sorry november 23rd november 24th i eliminated sugar and i have not so you're looking at from november 2022 going on two years almost i have not put a drop of sugar in my body nothing mm-hmm. sugar related in my body so if i could do it anybody could do it it's just that mindset Understanding it, that long term effect. Yeah, exactly. Matter of fact, I I I was raised, you know, drinking soda pops. Uh, actually, yeah, as a child, we're actually we were so poor, we we didn't have soda pop when I was little. Yeah, and we didn't have much money. It was water only, and then then we we got we had more money, and and then yeah, now we had a soda pop every day. Yeah. And then as an adult, you know, uh, my pharmacy, I was in a grocery store and had all these fast food places out here for lunch, and and definitely. And then I started teaching the health, uh, some health programs at church and started reading about, oh, and then that's when I realized that, you know, eat that like two soda pops a day uh, and Dr. Peppers were, you know, yeah. as, you know, that was made by a pharmacist and doctor. That's healthy, right? <laughs> you know, and so, and so I, uh, um, matter of fact, I've gone to the museum. I had all kinds of collectibles and things like that for that, you know, that, yeah. that beverage. But I started realizing. So then I cut back to where I just have one a week. And, um, and then I thought, you know, well, I, then it's easy. You know, if I did cut back and wean myself off of it and it was a process, but after I got off of it and then I, even like that one a week, I'd have it and go, oh, this is horrible. Yeah. You don't crave it. after. Why? Exactly. Why was I even drinking that? So same thing now. So, you know, whenever somebody has a sweet beverage and I need, uh, to drink a little bit of a beverage, I don't have mine and to wash some pills down, it's just like, how can they stand that? Yeah. And, but, but it's a process and it yeah. can be a process. And so some people, you know, can have that ability to go cold turkey. Some people need to wean off of it. I mean, uh, it, it I mean down and, it, it, sugar is addictive. It's a drug. It is. Okay. So we have to, uh, we have to make that very aware that there's certain people that, that have addictive, more of addictive behavior and that, that, that high, that, that energy levels or whatever you want to call it, it's addictive, right? Is it that, and, and it's not going to be as easy for some individuals to completely eliminate sugar. That's why you have to make the whole the alternatives 
to adjust right. and slowly wean off, whether you go to Stevia or the Monk or the other. We're going to go through the list here. Yes, sir. The next one I want to talk to um, is something I was I mean, really familiar with. It apparently, it comes naturally from certain fruits. It's all you loose. Am I pronouncing yeah. that right? Or D all well, you loose? Yeah. Uh, yeah, D uh, stands for the chemical structure, part of the chemical yeah. structure, but allulose. Uh, allulose is actually, it's another sugar. And uh, so it ends in O-S-E. Yes. Uh, and so that is a sugar. And yeah. it's probably uh, a, a larger molecule that is actually naturally found in fruit. Yeah. And uh, so it is part of that fruit structure. There's different kinds. Uh, each fruit has a different quantities and amounts, and it is found in in that. And so it's a little bit larger molecule, so it's, it's a little bit more difficult to digest, meaning it takes longer to digest. So it doesn't seem to spike blood glucose levels. Okay. It, it, it actually is becoming very popular. There's okay. actually a little bit of research showing that it has some anti-cancer benefits, maybe. Interesting. And so, yeah, so I, hmm, that's really, that's good. That's encouraging. And so I, you know, I, I cautiously say it can be okay, but I'm not willing because it's actually so new. It's only a few years. And and can can you actually physically buy it in packages? Like, where do you get this from? Um, yeah, I've never even seen this before. I've not seen the packet, but I know it's available in powders. It is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and powders. And actually, Several of our uh, protein bar companies are making the switch, you know, and especially since erythritol and xylitol are now getting bad press. And you know, we realize, uh oh, there may be a cardiovascular issue with that with long term use um, and high dose use. And now they're starting to put allulose in things. And um, but once again, I, I, it is an option and I will eat it. I haven't noticed any GI issues. Uh, but once again, it's so new. We just got to be kind of careful and pay attention. Okay. 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 So that's another one. The next is natural. Um, you can buy organic. It's something that I actually, as quote unquote, a healthy person before I got diagnosed with cancer, I would eat it on a regular basis. It was, it was, it would, it would actually kill my craving of sweetness if I ever had a craving. So once a week, twice a week, I really, I was somebody, I would see somebody eating a donut. I would crave something. I would have a date. And it was something I was having on a regular basis. Nothing crazy, maybe four or five, six a week, but I've eliminated them, period. That means that they are, they are a sugar in your body. Yes. What's your mindset with dates? Well, the, you know, in looking at the research uh, and seeing if it increases the risk of cancer, I can't say that they do. Yeah. And so um, the, you know, there is enough fiber that kind of slows that sugar absorption down. But the impact on a person's blood glucose, it can definitely raise it. And, you know, there's different, you know, we talk about dates and, and there's actually different types okay. you know, from different parts of the world and different regions and, and there's different sizes. But they're all yeah. very similar in the, you know, they do have a, a lot of natural sugars in them, a lot of fiber. And I will use them to a, a, a little bit. And so in combination, actually, so. Um, my wife blesses me with a protein bar. I think we've talked about that before. And mm. and actually, we do put some dates in that. That's the sweetener. Yeah. And we grind up the dates with the nuts and the seeds and the oils as a combination. But that is the sweetener that is in it. And uh, the, the, it has a little bit of an almond butter you know, in that. There's no, It's not sweetened yeah. almond butter or peanut butter because I don't want those sugars. And and so so it can be okay. There's no true, you know, concerns about it causing cancer or increasing the risk that we know of. But it kind of goes back to what I like. You know, I call it cancer keto. But you know, I I think we have to be careful about the number of carbs. And so, you know, I have to admit I haven't eaten a, a whole date. I don't know in I don't know, a month or two. You know, even though we've got them at the house, we got them in the fridge so we can put them into this protein bar that we make—a protein yeah. and nuts and seeds and fats. So, uh, so I think we just have to be cautious about it. And so, you know, it, it doesn't take much to, you know, to get a lot of sugars. Yeah. There, it, it, same thing with figs. Yeah. I don't know if you're, if, if that's on your list or not. I, I, it, it's, it's no, it's not on my list, but figs are something also, I was a big, um, proponent of eating organic figs. This is pre-cancer diagnosis. Uh-huh. That was something where, um, I, I would have in my car, 
um, a baggage dry figs all the time. And it was like, if I, if I needed to rush, I needed to go to the gym, I would have, yeah. I would eat a couple of dry figs. And it was something I did on a regular basis. But once again, it's the sugar level that's spiking. So when you're looking yeah. at a, a keto diet or a Mediterranean keto diet that I'm on, mm-hmm. that sugar levels, you, you want to keep them down and anything like that exactly. is going to spike them. So I avoided, I eliminated them on my diet, but they're very similar to in my mindset as dates. I would alter exactly. Them. They are. Yeah, they're and they they both are very similar in that uh, it's called a glycemic load or that impact on your blood sugar. And you know, each person is different. And and if you combine it with other foods, it may not be quite as bad. You know, like like the protein bar, the yeah. uh, fats. You know, fats and protein will kind of slow down the whole digestive process. So they won't spike it as bad. So if you have it on an empty stomach, like before your exercise, the purpose of that was so you could do more you know, yes. with your exercise because it spiked your blood glucose you yeah, know, and yeah, the muscles yeah. you know, yeah. need that and your heart yeah. needs that you know, for that muscle development. So yeah, so it's, it, we, we need to be careful about those. I definitely will eat some, especially in a combination you know, with okay. other food. Okay. And so they are a healthier alternative for people if they do yeah. want to get that. Definitely. I mean, if you're going to get, Definitely. like you said, if you're going to have a workout, I mean, I would tell people to have a, have a small banana and a, and a couple of dates and that'll get you through the workout and good solid workout. Right. right. So exactly. those are just ways, just ways of knowing when to use it and mm-hmm. what times of the day to use it. So you're trying to give it more during the day. So you have a chance to burn it off. If you do have that yeah. fight, mix it in with a, mix it in with some avocado, mix it with a fat to kind of balance it out. There's different ways of doing it. The next one is one that there's a lot of individuals in the health industry, especially in the carnivore diet scene that push honey. And they say, honey, eat honey, put honey on everything. These guys will put honey on everything. Organic honey is something where it's so readily available it seems like there's a healthier alternative. It's going to do the exact same thing as dates and everything. It's going to right. spike you up. What's your mindset with honey? Because it's one of the most natural things we could probably get. And there is other health benefits to having honey as well, right? Definitely. There is. Once, so, you know, figs and, and dates and honey, they're natural. And as a matter of fact, maybe even whether well, dark, all kinds of great nutrients in these, these foods. Yeah. Okay. There are foods. Um, but the honey thing, yeah, and matter of fact, I'm blessed. One of my clients has a um, uh, brings me honey, so they've got several hives, and actually they put hives all over the region. And she brings me honey all the time, and and I will uh, rarely, occasionally use some, but um, it will spike your blood glucose. And I actually haven't measured that except for one day uh, this winter. I had some hot tea. I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna you know, make some, uh, make a, a matcha. And then I put some honey in that matcha and, and drank it. And an hour later I went hypoglycemic. I mean, I was nauseous and headache and it's, seriously I had that kind of a, I haven't had that kind of a reaction, but then I'm not used to sugars and sweets. And yeah. so, you know, but it actually, you know, I, I it kind of forced me to go become kind of hypoglycemic very quickly. So, I, you know, and I had a hard time even concentrating. I was working on, on writing an article and, and so I had to actually, I had to go eat something. And I balance, better. The balance, the balance, the balance, the balance, the balance, yeah, get, because I haven't, I hadn't, it had taken me out of ketosis and into, into burning sugar. And then I hadn't flipped that switch. It does take some time to go into fat burning ketosis. Yes. So, uh, and it, it can be okay, but we've got to be careful about the quantity. I have to admit. You know, I, I have to, I put more than two teaspoons in, in my tea okay. when I did yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So I did put quite a bit. So yes, uh, just a little bit. Uh, and once one thing's a little bit frustrating is that also putting honey in a hot beverage, the heat actually destroys some of those benefits. Yeah, of course. So, so yeah, so honey is something you would obviously recommend as an alternative. You try to try to go the organic route, but it's something once again, like all sugars, you want to monitor it. And, and why I'm giving these alternatives because reality is, I'm just throwing a number out there. I would say nine, eight to nine out of ten people aren't going to cut out sugar 100. percent That's just a reality. Sure, it's it's a sure. mindset where you have to have a very strong mindset to be able to eliminate that and stick with that. So it might be a slower process where you have to mm-hmm. kind of wing it off and eventually cut it off. So in the process, we want to give people these alternative options that they're making better choices in the meantime. 
as they're on their battle of preventing or prevailing with cancer kind of thing. Right. Um, with honey, I think we're going to, we're Canadian. I have to mention this one because you okay. find it in the, it kind of in the same category as honey, but there are quite a few extra benefits health wise is maple syrup. Oh, mm hmm. Yeah. So let's talk about maple syrup. Would you categorize it exactly with honey or is there, is, is there better, is it worse? What is your mindset? Because in, in Canada, maple syrup is, is like, it's like our water. If you want to check, people put maple right. syrup on everything here. Sure. Yes. And, and so, uh, um, true maple syrup, not adulterated. Yes. And of course. Honey is the same. Honey is the same thing. So yeah, yeah. You, you need to get that from somebody that you trust, you yeah. know, and, and not, you know, buy it from this. We have some people selling honey out here with a sign saying, you know, give you a phone number and they'll sell you a, a quart of honey. You know, it's like, well, where are they getting that from? What is in it? You know, we don't yeah, know. Yeah. And so same thing with maple syrup. And so maple syrup can be also a, a good item. And, you know, it has all kinds of great nutrients. It's a plant product, you know, uh, it, but it definitely can raise your blood glucose. So matter of fact, the same thing with all of these type items, the only way we know is to assess and not guess, meaning you, you, you can do a finger stick blood test for your blood glucose and or your ketones and find out how you respond to it. And so, um, so, you know, you know, a little bit of a maple syrup definitely could be an option. You know, I'm not, what is the process? You know, we don't have maple, you know, trees here. What, what kind of tree is it? It comes from, I don't even know. So is it yeah. maple or? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm okay. assuming it's a maple tree. That's, <laughs> and then they'll, they literally just, they plug it in and tap it, tap right. it in tap and, it. And, and, and let it, let it go. Right. Yeah. And, but what, what's the process used in, in, in there just some cooking or something or. I, 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 I would, I'd be lying if I told you I knew, uh, yeah. I would assume yeah. that it would be all natural. It would just be right from the tree. But I'm just, there. There could be a process of boiling or, or the, the yeah. There, there's kind of a there is a, a a process in that, and and so. Uh, but actually, I I don't know any negative things about that at all, um, except you know that it will raise your blood glucose, and there's no fiber in it. So you know, if you is there more fiber in is there more fiber in hunt? No, zero either. No. Okay. Yeah, they're very similar, and as far as I'm concerned, in the amount of sugars, uh, maple syrup might not be quite as sweet. Yeah, I don't know. It's I, pretty I sweet. Know. It's pretty sweet. Is it? I I would honestly think that maple syrup has more of a sweet taste than honey. Does it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Especially if you get a really rich organic honey, it's thicker. It's okay. um, oh, it, has, okay. it, it it could get a little bittery too sometimes. I, I okay. find with the maple syrup, it's more, it's more watery, it's more thinner, it's a little more sweet on your tongue, you taste. Okay. So I find maple, yeah. pure maple syrup very, very, very sweet. And so, yeah, and syrup, you know, and, and maple syrup, you know, you've got to read those labels. Yeah, you 100%. Know? 100%. Yeah. I what mean, it, it's, it's, I mean, you, you're literally, you could go, there is, I mean, alternatively in Canada, I mean, you drive up north of it and there's, farm after farm of maple syrup organic farm right. you can literally just yeah. go right to the farm and get them buy them right at the farm okay and they're not and they're not cheap i mean you're paying 15 20 bucks for a little bottle of this stuff mm -hmm. it's okay. literally like it's like crack for some people people love this stuff here <laughs> it's crazy crazy yeah so the last one i want to go through is something that i'm not aware of i read about it today i was researching it a bit it's yakun have i pronounced you right yakun syrup Y A C O N syrup. It's from primarily from South America. It's dark, it's thicker, it's kind of a honey content. And apparently there's so much health benefits to it in South America. And they've been using it for centuries as an alternative okay. to sugar. Have you ever heard of it before? No, I haven't. Okay, have so to, I, I got to get your, yours. It's Y A C O N syrup. Okay. And it came up as the top seven best alternatives for sugar on many websites. Okay. And like I said, it's, it's primarily from South America. It's been used for centuries. And um, I'm assuming it's plant-based, that's the way I was reading it. And it's uh, essentially it's a thicker, um, darker, more of a honey contact. And okay. it's apparently, they say it's anywhere from five to 600% sweeter than actual uh -huh. refined sugar. And they use okay. it in a lot of their cooking and stuff like that in South America. So, yeah, I'd have to, you know, kind of well read the label and see what's in that. But, you know, what's the plant source? 
you know, what is how much sugar or carbohydrates are in that. So right. if, if there's anything that has carbohydrates, it's going to be an issue. So, yeah. you know, another natural one that is not very popular, actually, they use it for brewing and, you know, for making distilled spirits like tequila, but yeah. agave. You know, Agu- uh, yes, 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 yes. You're seeing, syrup, you know, you're seeing agave in a lot of drinks. Yes, that's right. Yeah. It's it's it is sweet. It's syrupy and and sweetens drinks. And it, yes, it is natural, but it will raise your blood glucose. But don't. You know, but and, isn't there a big? What I was reading about that, and I, I was I didn't even have it on my list because it wasn't even on the list of top ten. When um, with agave, isn't there a big refining process to that as well? Yes, that's that's right, and that's why I wonder about that South American, you know, thing. I don't know, but yeah. why, uh, we need to learn. So, you know, I'm I'm open to learning. Yeah. Um, you know, and and the the type of sugar that may be in that South American uh, item, you know, maybe kind of like one of these larger sugar molecules. Yeah, and it just takes longer to digest and digest it off. So I'm kind of curious, and 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 I'll check it out, and learn on it, and it might be one. It might be one know. of your posts coming up yeah. soon. Okay. Yeah, this is, exactly. Yes, this is this has been awesome. I'm just going to go through the ones that, quote unquote, are better alternatives that you kind of improved with. I kind of checked them off, and okay. it could be a way for people to wing out sugar, and hopefully, it'll eventually eliminate it and do the process like myself and you are doing. No sugar, but a stevia, monk fruit, date, yes, honey, yeah. and maple syrup. Those are the five that are right. good alternatives, controlled. The time of day you Quantity. take it, when you take it, quantities, and you're trying right. to get the, the best source of it. Like you said, a stevia, I'm going to look into in the raw, having different options that you're trying to limp, get these things that are not processed. You're trying to get them yeah. as natural form as possible. Right. right. This has been awesome. This has been a very uh, sweet subject this week. <laughs> good. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Uh, Episode 15, we we made it. So uh, I'm excited for this one to come out. Thank you so much, Keith. You're welcome. All right.